So, after two weeks, I have returned. The fantasy news must flow! Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a wide set of fantasy news to dissect. This ranges from everything from trailers to cover reveals. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the fantasy news. And we're gonna go ahead and kick it off with a cover reveal from one of my personal favorite authors, Fonda Lee. Untethered Sky has the synopsis, a young woman forms a tempestuous bond with a gigantic and deadly bird of prey in this epic fantasy fable about the pursuit of obsession at all costs. With cover art by Jamie Jones, this is yeah, something I'm gonna be obviously paying attention to, not just because Fonda Lee, but also some giant bird companions. Who doesn't like some tempestuous giant bird companions? But switching on over from a new cover to a well-known story, The Last Unicorn, one of the most critically acclaimed children's books of all time, is getting a new special edition release. Galanx's hardcover release of this, unfortunately, will not be directly available in North America, though there are ways around that. With a price tag of 40 schmeckles, this actually isn't the most overpriced special edition I've ever seen, and it looks pretty good. Galanx doesn't always align with my taste, but I got nothing against this one. Now, hey, psst, this next one's unofficial. So keep it on the DL! But we are also getting a special release of some Dark Souls lore put together by a fan and a new hardback that's available for pre-order now. This two-volume edition is apparently accumulation of not only the lore directly in the games, but years of research done into what has inspired the Souls games. And if you as a Dark Souls fan weren't already sold on this, it will also come with a map! I love me some maps! My house is coated in framed maps that my girlfriend is not the biggest fan. We're, we're, we're debating which ones get kept and put where. I'm not letting her get rid of any of them. Now comes the kind of rough news though, because unlike The Last Unicorn, this one has quite the hefty price tag, coming in at its cheapest at 180 US dollars. Oof. And then there is a more limited edition that is coming out to a whopping 495. <laughs> and on top of that, there is no attached release date aside from saying they're hoping to get them printed and sent out before the end of 2022. And that alone is something I know will be bothering some fans who would otherwise like to go ahead and get that pre-order done. What I will say is, hey, if you'd like to get your copies and special editions reviewed, I've been known to do special edition reviews. <laughs> Send them my way, please. I can't, I can't justify spending that money though. I wouldn't make it back in the video, so drat. But all right. All right, I'll talk about the big old trailer that dropped with House of the Dragon. And this first trailer had, I saw quite a few fans pretty excited. And I'll admit, it definitely does look pretty interesting and very high quality. But that's not where my concerns with the House of the Dragon show come from. I knew HBO was going to be making this look visually as good as Game of Thrones ever looked. But the best looking seasons of Game of Thrones were also some of the worst. So I do not trust trailers in general because of how misleading they can be. I'll admit, yeah, at least spectacly, this will look fantastic as a show, but I am personally reserving my thoughts until I can watch at least the first couple of episodes, because with shows like this, it's going to come down to writing more than anything else. I never had any doubt in the production value of House of the Dragon. It's coming down to the material they're adapting and how they're actually telling that story. But for those who really wanted me to be more positive, I will end on a very positive note, and that's that I loved the costume design here. These people looked so good in terms of their fits. And today's video is brought to you by Campfire. It's a place you can go to get all your writing needs met. It's the loyal, choose your own price online writing software. Uh, faithful, loyal, it would never also sponsor Red Sanderson behind your back. No, 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 it's, it's, it's got a great community you can be a part of. Discord servers, their own YouTube channel, all this stuff to help get the stories that are in your head out into the page. And what I love about Campfire most is their loyalty and how they would never sponsor Brandon Sanderson behind your back. That's what makes Campfire so special. 
the fact that they're the writing software that genuinely I recommend everyone in the Goblin can check out because you basically can choose how it's worth to you, pay that price, and then absolutely use one of the best writing softwares in the world to help get any story that's percolating your mind off the page. How dare you, Jackson? And in a last minute fantasy news update, because God hates it when I try to work on anything but videos, we had two trailers drop back to back. The first of which was the Dungeons and Dragons trailer, which actually hit a tone that I was quite expecting. Summarizing what was way too long of a rant, I kind of liked how it did have creative visuals going on and intricate usages of Dungeons and Dragons magic. So I was like, okay, there's an owl bear, but then there was like the undercutting humor that felt very millennial, taha MCU-esque. But maybe that's appropriate because that's where a lot of the humor in like actual D&D games I've gone into resides. I'm not entirely sure, but it feels like it'll be predictable. It'll have a run of the mill. Oopsie, we did a bad now we got to make up for it thing. And I'm expecting it to be totally fine and look visually at least creative, if not high quality. Because some of those VFX I was like, as weak, but other ones I was like, that looks great. And I am... Curious? Like I'm questioning if I'm curious, but I guess I am curious because I am questioning that if I am curious or not. So therefore I am curious. And then we got the Wheel of Time trailer, which gave us some cinematic shots of peoples on beaches and then rapidly changed on over to the Aiel. And I was excited to say the least, but I'm also a little bit still uh, after last season turned out to be what it was. Overall, I'm still a massive Wheel of Time fan and I I am going to be excited to watch season two no matter what. There's a part of me that's always gonna be able to turn off the critical side of my brain and just enjoy being in Robert Jordan's world because it's Robert Jordan's amazing fantasy world that was like my escape when I was a kid. And on the other side of things, I really want season two to be the step up I know it can be. So some of the costuming here did impress me. I loved seeing a live action Aiel in the waist in all of their garb. I liked a lot of the practical effects on display, but there was already again, some inklings from season one that I had problems with returning, like these costumes, for example, I wasn't that big a fan of. So I'm just left going, please step it at least a couple notches higher because ah! there were moments of greatness in season one and I want that to become the norm for every season going forward. I try to always give a show about two seasons before I completely write it off. And Wheel of Time is gonna definitely get more of a grace period for me because of my childhood connection to the show. That being said though, let me know what you think of the look at the Wheel of Time in the comments down below, as well as the Dungeons and Dragons one, if that's what tickles your fancy. Back to the video. Now this next piece of news is not exactly science fiction, it's science history, but it's also something that was so influential to so many sci-fi stories. I'm still gonna cover it because it's just something I'm excited about. Get my pack. And that is going to be, we had a poster drop for Oppenheimer. The upcoming science fiction movie by Christopher Nolan that has an absolutely ridiculously stacked cast, including Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh, Jack Quaid, Matt Damon, Josh Peck, and several more notable names. It's just, wow. And this poster, I could not think of a better poster. This, that, that is, I will give that a rock solid goblin stamp of approval. And are you bummed out that you caught the everything everywhere all at once hype too late and weren't able to see it in cinemas? Well, guess what? It's being re-released and excitedly for people who are as big a fans of the movie as myself, it's going to have eight additional minutes of footage, which is actually enough to drive me back into the theater to see it yet again. I'm gonna say something here that might rile some feathers, but it's my honest to God opinion. And Maybe it's because of so many toxic discussions happening about so many other adaptations coming down the road right now, but I might be most curious about the upcoming Fallout show coming from Amazon. And these new photos that came out spiked that even higher because it reminded me just how much I love apocalyptic dystopian sci-fi stuff set in the near future and that's exactly what this is going to be. As well as we're in an age of production values for shows and streaming services that absolutely are able to craft an immersive world that feels so lived in and vivid and seeing these practical trucks and storefronts and effects really feeling absolutely nail on the head for Fallout. It's got me a little bit hopeful. And I know I just said like a trailer failed to make me feel more excited than these images are, but it's like, it's just reminding me how hype this could be, which is making me go like, oh, I'd love a good Fallout show. This would be great. 
there's a lot of problems in some Fallout games, so it's also falling into the recent trend of adaptations that has had some flawed source material they've absolutely improved and made better. Boys Invincible, also Amazon Projects, now additionally Fallout, so maybe? I'd be excited to see this done. So this is something I'm actually gonna be like, you know what, no. Away with the negativity. I'm hyped for the Fallout show. I'm ready to be disappointed. That's not high. I don't know what I'm feeling, but I've seen your comments. A lot of you like it when I'm very negative on something. And so I'm going to be with this next one. And that's going to be the recent Resident Evil show over at Netflix, which is now one of Netflix's worst rated shows ever. That's not given us hope for all the franchises that are in Netflix's hands. They continue to have that, as I've said a thousand times here, throw it at the wall, see what sticks strategy. And it's paying off less and less. And this recent one being a major franchise adaptation that they divorced from the source material in a very bad way. Unlike Fallout, Resident Evil's story that has never been truly adapted to live action is something the fans want. Why aren't you going for a smaller scale, well-written, intense horror drama about people checking out just like a... That would be a better Resident Evil. Why do people, this is like the franchise that's the most cursed when it comes to Hollywood being like, F your source material, whatever we want. And with other things like Avatar, One Piece, being in the hands of Netflix, it's not a good trend to be setting for yourself. Witcher season two, which I'd be more positive on than most people, already has been putting a bad taste in people's mouth. And I'm not saying Netflix hasn't had some bangers recently. They absolutely have. But when it's come to big franchise stuff, they've dropped the ball a lot recently. Obviously. Arcane's doing a lot of lifting for him there, but that's really the only one that in terms of a big franchise adaptation I can think of coming out recently from Netflix that I've really liked. I'm sure someone's going to correct me in the comment section, and that's actually a great trick and a way to get people to recommend things for me to watch. Gotcha! But in the final piece of news I wanted to cover here today is potentially a very good piece of news. There is a single player focused alien game in the works, thank God. One of my favorite single player campaigns of all time growing up was the AVP games that were just so much fun. And then Alien Isolation, absolutely. On the flip side of that, the recent attempt at a multiplayer focused alien game was embarrassing. That is actually the first game I have ever just uninstalled and refunded almost immediately while playing on stream. It was embarrassingly bad, the Alien AI. So seeing them return to a single player focus, which I think absolutely fits this world and medium better, is great. And apparently there being a VR inclusion immediately excites me because I like being scared by aliens, not treating them as like action schlock, you just shoot in waves. And having VR makes me think it's going to have a horror lean? Maybe that's just me being hopeful. But this has just been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already and join the Discord server and post any stories you'd like to hear me cover next week in the Fantasy News channel. Thank you so much for your recent love on the Malazan video and have a good one, y'all. Peace.